quarter and probably I'm just doing two steps, you know, three melodies. You see it kind of circling because your holes are an outsized for us. Not complaining, just saying. <laughs> yeah. As you can see, the, uh, the build-up eventually comes off if it doesn't. Various ways to get it off, usually involving a wooden finger or something like that, held in there against the bit. I've seen like paint brushes used too. Sometimes. Uh, that would work. I mean, I, I've used the screwdriver because that's actually grass. Mm -hmm. um, again, if, I would I wouldn't recommend the kids doing that. Um, I have 17 years of practice of machining, so sometimes I can get away with stuff that they can't and not get injured. Was I correct in assuming all these rounds are bearing pockets on this design? Yeah. Okay. So I, I uh, cheated them uh, 30, uh, 30 microns, so basically a thou oversized on radius. Okay. So theoretically, you should have a nice snug fit. Um, depending on what size here, if we got some, we can test that theory out. Okay. Just to see. But again, that's, that's a trial and error completely. You know. In aluminum, you got to have a little more because the poly kind of stretches. Yeah. And now, because it's a bearing packet, we're going to just pour the whole thing out. How many passes did you do on that? Uh, I'm doing two layers. Okay. So three millimeters depth per, or, you know, three and a half per pass. Or, you know, half a, half a quarter inch, so an eighth inch. Yeah, that's what we were kind of talking about for, you know, for bearings and stuff. Your your options are basically you could you can do you can do it this way, which we thought is think is the best for precision stuff. Um, for a lightning hole, you could potentially do a perimeter cut, like you said, but you'd have to leave a couple tabs and punch it out later. Um, we we learned very quickly that just trying to cut it out and leave it free was a terrible idea. You broke too many bits. I didn't have too many big pieces launched, but there's that too. Um, well, I suppose with this like machine, it's running fast enough. You don't really need the extra speed benefit you would get from doing it the other way. Yeah, I, where it would be nice is like doing a doing a gearbox or something like that. Um, now, when we did our belly pan, um, if you look at that, it's basically got an expanded metal crosshatch pattern. Uh, you know, over underlaid with all the stuff we need. Okay all the mounting holes. So that one, you know, most of the pockets were just, you know, straight parallelograms and you get four a tab aside. Um, some of them were kind of weird shapes and you might only have one or two tabs. Uh, but either way, you had, to, you had to file a tab on every big side. Yeah. So, but then hogging out, you know, hogging out two-thirds of a, uh, what, two-foot by three-foot sheet would have taken hours. Yeah. As opposed to 45 minutes for the whole thing. So. Okay, now we're going to do the outside. I don't know if you saw it push down a little bit. You know, we got a little bit of bounce in there. My depth is set such that we're going down into the spoil board slightly anyway. Which is why I was asking you guys what, what the actual thickness of poly was. Yeah. So, looks like we set it about right, though. Right. We'll see what kind of We'll see how many of those uh, bearing pockets actually show up in the foil board when we're done. But, um, amazingly, this is only our second uh, spoil board that we've gone through, although it's pretty well used up, as you can see. for the tabs when it comes around here. 